Get over here! What's up everyone, the Green Scorpion here, and while I'm not a huge fan of using hashtags or this topic hasn't exactly affected me as much as some others would say, well, it's still a topic I should definitely address, and that's in terms of YouTube's current standing with fair use. Now, for those of you who don't know, fair use is basically the law that states that any content or material that is copyrighted can be used without permission as long as it's for the purposes of criticism, commentary, parody, education, or anything of the sort. So, whenever you guys see me doing a video on YouTube about whatever video game or what have you that I can think of, as long as it's for the purpose of review, which it is, I can use it. Now, the problem is that not everyone, especially the big companies, are going to see it that way. And I have my own experiences when it comes to copyright, copyright claims and content ID claims and everything. And yes, it has affected my channel and it's a bit of a problem. Um, the Nostalgia Critic already uh, expressed his opinions on this and so has Josh Scorcher recently as well as the Quarter Guy. And yeah, I agree with every single one of them because the current standing of fair use on YouTube right now is kind of ridiculous. And it's not just YouTube really, it's, it's also like, it's also the big companies that are kind of like afraid of their con- that their content's being used for anything other than fair use. And the thing is, it's a fair point. Um, I understand the need for copyright laws and fair use laws and everything because as content creators, for anyone who's creating something original, if someone else is making money off of that material, then that's an issue. And I completely understand that. However, for some reason, companies still seem to think that the little guys like, say, myself, or anyone else who's doing uh, things on YouTube, whenever they see them using their materials, whether it's for criticism or commentary or whatever, they still seem to feel the need to attack them and give them a claim or like give them a strike or something that hinders what they do. Now, I've had my experiences with uh, this, as I mentioned, and I've got plenty of videos on my, U on my YouTube channel right now that have content ID claims. I had to acknowledge the third party content, which basically means that I don't get a strike on my channel, which is good. The bad news is, I can't make ad revenue off of this. I'm partnered with Broadband TV Core and I'm making money off of YouTube through Google's AdSense. And as long as a video has a content ID claim on it, I can't use that video for that purpose. Now, normally it wouldn't be a huge deal, like when you really think, but when you really think about it, I'm getting money from Google every month. And when a video or a few videos don't have that, that's monthly income I'm not getting. Now, I, I realize that this is going towards money, but that's the thing. Um, when it comes to YouTubers or content, content uh, creators who are trying to make a living off of using the internet to express their opinions or express their artwork or anything, this kind of thing is a big deal. And when a little bit is not being made, in the grand scheme of things, that's a lot of money that they're not making. And there was one case where I actually, I actually don't think a lot of you maybe are aware of this because this is something that only my really, really earliest subscribers would know about. One of my videos actually had to be taken down because um, of a third party content acknowledgement and that was from Konami and another company that I don't actually remember off the top of my head right now. There was a countdown I did way early in my YouTube career that was called the Top 10 Video Game Vocal Songs. So you guys have seen my my uh, you guys have seen my music countdowns. I talk about music and everything, but the thing is, that's the doing music countdowns. While I love doing them, involve the biggest risk of getting a content ID claim because of how long I actually have to have the music playing in order for it to in order for me to give it proper justice. Unfortunately, that's what happened with my top ten video game vocal songs a while ago, and Konami uh, actually uh, claimed the main theme to Metal Gear Solid 3, which I consider one of the greatest uh, vocal songs ever made. And because of that, I got a huge warning from Konami, and as a result, I've had to actually take down that video for risk of getting a copyright strike. And copyright strikes are not good on YouTube, uh, on YouTube channels. Seriously, you get three of those and your channel is dead. All of that content that you had, gone. And that is the scariest thing for a YouTuber. 
because all of that work, all of that material that you've done, all of that entertainment and all that hard work could potentially be gone because of copyright laws. And that's scary. In fact, that's petrifying. So yeah, this, this kind of thing uh, actually, this kind of thing actually got worse with SOPA's uh, situation uh, not too long ago, in fact. I think it was like five years ago, maybe? And ever since that, I actually had to, I was actually so scared of uh, what was going to be going on with that, that I actually went ahead and backed up every single video I had on YouTube at the time for risk of possible deletion. And a situation like that can get very, very nerve-wracking. And in terms of like uh, YouTube's uh, policy in ter like on the fair use and the copyright laws right now, it doesn't look like it's getting any better because despite the fair use laws, I'm still getting content claims, many people are still getting content claims despite them following the policies and making sure that the content they're using is strictly for the purposes of criticism and commentary. And when that happens, not only is that content that's being flagged or, or a black dot on an otherwise solid YouTube channel, that's also money we're not making, and it's money that the companies are not making, and I find it really ironic because when you really think about it, what we do as content creators and reviewers on YouTube is basically free advertising for these companies, so what's the issue? Are they afraid that we're going to be making money specifically on their, on their material? No! We can't do that because we're smarter than that. However, because of the fact that we're just the little guys and these guys are these big budget companies, when they give us a content ID claim or a copyright strike or give us a claim or anything, they have the power to fight us. So if we were to try and fight back, that's a losing battle. And as a result, that's pretty much uh, the case with, uh, with copyright laws right now and it's becoming a serious issue. And I only hope, and I'm saying this kind of skeptically, I only hope that this kind of thing can get resolved, or at least that the fair use laws can get a serious overview on uh, how they work, because as of right now, it's actually a pretty dangerous thing to be a YouTuber right now because, uh, because of these copyright, lo copyright laws and copyright claims and everything. So, despite me doing my best to make sure that all the material I use is filed under fair use and that I'm following the guidelines and the restrictions, why am I still getting targeted? Why is everyone who follows the rules still getting targeted? It's an issue. I'm the Green Scorpion, and YouTube, where's the fair use?